Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's live. I'm just waiting for Maria to join in. Today we are going to talk to a specialist. We are going to talk to a specialist, Maria Teche. She is a voice coach. And we are going to talk today all about the power of words. We are going to talk about how much words are important, uh, what words to use when, how can we uh, create a different space around us, how can we create different mindset around us when it comes to using the correct words. So Maria is just here, I'm in. So Maria, I kind of introduced you a little bit already. Uh, just to say that you are a voice coach. Hello, how are you? Hello, good morning, everyone. I'm going to adjust this just a tiny bit. Okay, amazing. So, uh, not many people know. Let's start with this. Not many people know what voice coach does. So, I was wondering, Maria, if you can maybe introduce yourself a little bit. What do you do, and how do you help people? Okay, so basically, a voice and speech coach. Um, as a voice and speech coach, what I do is I help people to look, sound, and feel like a million bucks when they go to present or give a speech, give a TED Talk, whatever it is they're doing, even one-to-one -one with a client. Brilliant. So, yeah, that's basically what I do. That's in a nutshell. Brilliant. But, and we spoke about this already, the two of us together, there are kind of two specific things. Why do people do come to you? And I, I kind of want to start with that because these days it is so important how we present ourselves. And on social media, all we hear is you have to have a great content. You have to have the right delivery. And we spoke about this, that a lot of time people do come to you because they are not very confident in what they do they're not really confident in coming out and you know doing the the live talks and 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 doing the reels and speaking out loud but also they might be confident in doing that but on the other hand they don't have the delivery the right delivery as you said to me before they sound flat so maybe tell us a little bit more about the confidence part um how can how can something like using the right words or coming to a voice coach can help them to gain that confidence yeah that's a really good point i think now more than ever because people are on facebook they're on instagram they're on whatever platform of their choice and they're also on zoom when they are communicating in their work situation mm -hmm. and sometimes you know they are face to face but a lot of the time this is our platform is this little square here so a, a lot of the time people come to me for a couple of reasons, either because nerves are getting the better of them and they're not performing at their best in the communication situations, or they don't have, they, they get that presentation, they do that live video, and then afterwards they go, oh my God, I could have done that so much better, but I don't know how. Mm -hmm. So here's the thing. When we are on these virtual platforms here, whether this is your, your space or it is a Zoom space or you're doing a Facebook Live, whatever it is, people want to own that space, but they just don't know how to do it. And mm -hmm. it's just about having the skills, the strategies, the techniques. First of all, it, I, I put it into um, an acronym, APT, APT. Mm -hmm. So A is for awareness. <laughs> What am I doing? How is that working? And if it is working, great, keep doing it. Mm -hmm. If it's not working, okay, well, I need to figure out what I need to do to make it work. So that's the awareness part. You got to figure out where you are and also where you want to go and how to get there. Mm -hmm. That's the mm -hmm. awareness part. Okay, that's the A. So the P is practice and preparation. Mm. This is a big one. Because this is where you get the skills, you figure out, okay, what do I actually need? What toolbox, what arsenal of weapons, communication skills do I need in order to get what I want? Mm -hmm. Which is connection and engagement with your audience. Yes. 
So then you get the skills and you practice and put them into, you, you practically apply those skills mm -hmm. and techniques. And then you, you, you try them, you figure out what they are, you put them into practice, and then you say, okay, how did I do? That's the P part, the practice and the prep. Then you, there's the T, and that's for take it public. And there is something you just said there, and it straight away triggered in me, and that's the preparation. I do not think many people do know that speaking public or, you know, doing presentations, doing online classes, it's the same like riding a bicycle. You have to go and practice to actually get better at it. Um, there is a huge myth. And I, I want to actually, this just kind of, kind of came to my head. A lot of people think that people are born to to speak public people you know and there is a saying oh you were born to 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 go love you were born to to talk public is this true or is this a myth biggest myth ever told i just wrote an article for brains magazine natural born speakers the greatest myth ever told or i should say the greatest myth ever sold because told. basically people are buying into this yes idea it's not true. Look, these, these 10 year old preachers in the South in America, they've actually been watching people do that since they were probably two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's a lot of years of practice there. These uh, public speaking or this, whether, whatever it is public, it could be virtual or face to face. Great speakers are made, they are not born. They are made, they are not born. Agreed. So when we, you know, the learning process is not only getting skills and practicing them from someone who's already done it, who knows how to do it already, who's been there, but it's also observing and watching because we learn by listening and watching as well. Mm -hmm. So there's a great book here. Actually, I actually think I have it over here. Oh, I can't find it. It's called Steal Like an Artist. Brilliant. And this book is, is fantastic. It's written by this guy who is a redactive poet, which is the most bizarre concept I've ever heard. He takes a page of words and he redacts all the words away until he has the words that he wants, which create the poem. Wow. Yeah, it's mad. But he wrote, he wrote this book and he has quotes from everybody, from Martin Scorsese to Francis Ford Coppola to artists, rap artists, musicians, I mean, all these people. Mm -hmm. And basically the idea is you, we watch, learn, and steal from the people who are doing what you want to do and they're doing it well. Yeah. Because you cannot, it's not the same thing as, as plagiarism or imitation. Yeah. Because unless you are, unless your work, your business is imitating Somebody else. People. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in our case, we're a public speaker, whatever it is, if someone is doing something that you like, steal it and try it for yourself and see, because you will make that your own. Exactly. Your own skill. So <laughs> if, if, if you see someone doing a TED Talk, and by the way, not everyone who does TED Talks are great, great presenters, because it's not about that. It's about it's spreading ideas. But Ted, Ted is, I watch loads of Ted Talks. I Same. love Ted Talks. Same. I'm loving Ted yeah. Talk. But it's brilliant because if you look at it from a content point of view, it's so exciting because people, again, it's ideas that are worth sharing. That's the whole thing that Ted is based on. Yes. And if you also look, it's a great place to watch people deliver vocally and physically because there are some people who are really not great presenters. And there are people who are fantastic presenters and you see both sides of the coin. And it's very useful to watch people doing something that you don't want to do as much as watching someone who's doing something that you do want to do. Yeah. Yeah. Like, as you said at the beginning, you know, going back to, for me, it's going back to the why, why do I do this? Why Am I here? Why do I even want to share this story? Why do I want to even talk to these people? What is my why? What is 
pushing me? What is bringing me to actually come here and talk to these people? And I feel for myself, if I am strongly feeling about the why, and if I am really behind that why, if I feel like this why is so powerful that can help the people, that can share the story, I feel more confident in, in talking about it. I feel more confident in sharing my story because my why is really strong. I am fully behind of what I'm saying rather than, you know, so many times you have speakers who they do practice, but they not 100% believe in what they're saying and it shows. Hmm. Yeah, and I think you, you put your finger on something really important and that is if you don't believe or if you're not connected to what you're talking about and you don't have that that emotional connection, then your audience won't have it. Because what you do is what we get. Yes. What you feel is what we feel. And it's huge. And you can't don't underestimate the power of an open, connected, passionate, joyful energy. And sometimes, see, this is the this is the crux of it, though. Sometimes people go, "Yeah, I feel that, but I don't know how to translate it to the audience." Mm -hmm. And the, the answer is, well, you practice, you get these because you can break it down. You can break down great delivery into two halves. You get your physical delivery and your vocal delivery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, that's that's your delivery part. Then you can break that down as well, whereas it's what you've got the, the how you say it and you've got the what you say. Yeah. So you've got those two halves as well. So the thing, the trick is to, I always think the word of the day is generosity. Mm -hmm. If you That's can take awesome. the spotlight off yourself and, oh my God, are they going to like me? Are they going to get what I'm saying? Am I going to screw up? Are they going to, what's... All those things are going through your head, like, in a second. Well, stop and take a breath and just remember, it's actually not about you. It's about the audience. Sam, and, and I think, like, this is massive what you just said, because I really do feel, and uh, I have these loads with, uh, with the clients that I work with, they attempt to... Let, let me put it this way. I'm asking client, why don't you talk about X, Y, and Z? Well, because then the people I'm talking to, they're going to think, I don't know, do X, Y, and Z. Like, let's say I'm talking to my client saying, why don't you talk to your clients about, you know, having a bad day? Why don't you talk about talk to your clients about being unorganized? And then they'd be like, well, uh, but I'm really organized. I'm like, yes, you are, but your client is not. The person that you are looking for to work with, it's the person you are talking to. You need to embody the person you are talking to. You have to leave yourself outside of this. You're not who you are. You are becoming the person you are talking to. Am I, am I, am I saying this right? Would you agree with this? that you need to embody the audience rather than staying, you know, in your own mind when you are talking to the audience. Yeah, I agree. For every presentation, speech, client, one-to-one -one meeting, you need to know who you need to know who you're talking to. Otherwise, it's like writing a love letter to to whom it may concern. <laughs> That's really nicely put. You know? And that's not going to work. So, yes. yeah. And, um, you know, this idea of know that one person that you're talking to. Even if it's an audience of a thousand people you're trying to reach. Mm -hmm. You're really talking to one, one person. Yeah. And it's that identification that we get with the audience or they get with you. Yeah. Wow, she gets it. She, she, she feels my pain. She gets it. For example, people come, I do this nerves workshop. It's called manage your nerves and present like a pro. Mm -hmm. And the reason I give this workshop is because I have very, I'm an actor and a performer. I've, I've been, I've made my living as an actor and a performer for 20 years. And voice coaching is something I started doing six years ago. Mm -hmm. 
And I've been with voice coaching actors and singers before that, but I started working in the corporate sector six years ago. And the reason I give this nerves workshop is because very late in my performing career, I got stage fright and I'd never had it before. I didn't know what was happening to me on stage. And I had a panic attack on stage and my hearing went, I couldn't hear. It was like everything was muffled. My vision went, I could only see very narrowly. And I felt like my body was, I was having an odd body experience. I was completely numb. It was the most bizarre experience. And I didn't understand what was happening to me. Mm -hmm. And only later I realized that I was having a severe panic attack on stage. And this is like after feeling, I mean, when I was on stage, it was the most, it was the most relaxing place I, I felt in my life was being on stage. I was invincible. I was like a tank on stage. I was bomb proof. And then this happened. Mm -hmm. And I thought I was going to have to give up coaching and give up performing. I thought it's like, oh my God, I'm going to have to get a job in a corner shop, like selling cigarettes because I can't, I can't do this anymore. And so I had to relearn all the skills that I give to people when it comes to managing their nerves. So I feel very strongly about that because I identify completely with yeah. what people are feeling in the most severe end of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. Because you went through it yourself. I went through it myself. And, and oh, sorry, go, yeah. for, go, yeah. Oh, go, no, yeah, so that was, that's it basically. What I wanted to circle around because there is a word that you used. And when we met the first time, I mean, we had really long call when we met the first time and we kind of circled around this word and we actually really want to talk about this word today. And you used a few times this word today and it's the word power. And I kind of want to circle around this word because the just the the, the word itself, power, I want to talk how much power words have on us in the first place, but also how much power just this one word, power, has on our mind, on our identity, on who we are. So when you are talking about, uh, you know, you, you have a stage right, and I see somebody's writing in here in the, in the comments as well, my nerves yeah. goes through the roof when I have a meeting. Have a meeting, yeah. How much of using the right, correct words when it comes to self-talk can help you to overcome this? I think words, words have power and they have power because we give them power. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, being afraid to talk about nerves or stage fright. It's when I first... I know for myself that the power was in the, was what I was giving the words nerves and the words stage fright because performers, I am there. If there's anyone on this, this uh, live session today who is a performer, we are very superstitious. We're like sportsmen. We're like people in, in the sports industry. We're really superstitious. Some, there are people who, you know, there's all kinds of crazy stuff. We do. And a lot of people, performers will not talk about stage fright. Mm-hmm because they're afraid that it will give power to the word if they talk about it. Mm -hmm. I had to get over that because a lot of people, the actors that I was talking to, they didn't want to talk about nerves or stage fright because they were afraid it would give that, that those words power. Mm -hmm. For me, it, when it comes to this kind of thing here, when it comes to public speaking and communication this way, one to many or one to one, the power I think for my clients comes in, first of all, what, what's, what's going on that's not working for me, number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, what can I see as, my, as a vision for myself in the future when, it, when I am strong, powerful, clear, and confident? Mm -hmm. And really envisioning that, that is powerful. So this thing up here is incredibly powerful. Yeah. And what comes out of our mouths is powerful too. And I think that our words, we give power to words. And we, list, we hear other people giving power to certain words and we absorb that, I think, too. Mm -hmm. 
But the power when it comes to my clients that I have found, yes, it is confidence, but confidence is many things. Confidence is a very broad word. And it's a feeling. It's a feeling, how we feel. Confidence is a sound of how we sound. And also confidence is visually what looks confident as well. Because what, what, what we could perceive, we go, oh my God, everyone could probably hear my heart going. Like this, someone who feels like their nerves go through the roof when they have to have a meeting with someone yeah. or go into a meeting. It's like, oh my God, they can hear my heart coming out of my chest. There's no way they can't hear this. But they don't. Yeah. They don't hear it, but you feel it. Yeah. So it's finding, you know, it's kind of also matching, starting to get those things to match up a little bit too when it comes to the work. Yeah. And um, I mean, I I speak, I'm, I, I used to be a singer, so um, I'm a natural performer. I, okay, don't, I don't want to say natural performer, but I perform from very, very young age. Um, so performing or talking live, it's it's something that doesn't give me you know, the butterflies, uh, I'm quite used to it. But in talking about that, if I'm doing something new, or if, if I'm going in, in front of new people, yes, I do get that butterflies inside my stomach. And I do get that, you know, sweaty paws. And I, you know, I feel like, oh, my goodness. But one thing that really helped me and tell me if I'm wrong, and I, I, I watched this TED talk actually about being a nervous uh, before performing. It's about using the words, again, using the power of the words to tell myself, okay, this feeling, it's not being nervous. This feeling, it's an excitement. It's me being excited. It's me being powerful. It's, it's the energy going through my body. It is not the nerves but it is the excitement, it is the energy. And talking to myself in this way really, really helps me to calm myself down, you know, take a few deep breaths, but also just really calm myself down in being like, you got this, and this is power what you're feeling rather than being nervous. What, what are your thoughts about this? Yeah, Simon Sinek gave a very gave the TED talk about mm -hmm. nerves versus excitement. Yeah, I, I agree a hundred percent because the same a lot of the same physical indicators happen when you get overexcited about something as when you feel like you're getting nervous mm -hmm. about something. I think also it's important to remember for anyone who's listening today is that when you feel like you're getting nervous, we'll just use that word for the moment. Mm -hmm. What's really happening is that you're getting a bump of adrenaline in your body because it knows it's doing something it normally doesn't do. Yes. And it also means that you care very much about what you're going to do. So the excitement part, and also remember that the brain doesn't register the negative not or no. So if there's this thing, I'm not nervous, I'm not nervous, I'm not nervous, I'm not nervous. Well, what your brain is actually registering is I'm nervous, I'm nervous, I'm nervous. Yeah. So that doesn't work. We know that doesn't work. So your your um this TED talk that you heard from Simon Sinek, the excitement part really makes sense because it's a it is the adrenaline first of all number one. It's a physical thing that's happening to us. It's adrenaline. Mm -hmm. It's very simple, and it's that fight or flight mechanism that's kicking in. Now you can't do either one of those things: fight or run away. Yeah. So your body freaks out and it goes, "Okay, I can't do either one of those things." And it freezes. Yeah. It goes into meltdown. So it's about reminding the body, again, this powerful thing up here. Actually, what if I'm just really excited about what I have to give today? Now, that is taking, that's taking into account that you have done the work <laughs> and the preparation <laughs> beforehand. Yeah. If you haven't, well, then that's fear you're feeling for a very good reason. Okay. For a very so, good reason. Yeah. For a very good reason, because you, you're winging it. And trust me, the Tony Robbins, the Elon Musks, the TED Talk, most of the TED Talk people, they, they have honed, crafted, polished that 18 minutes. Trust me. Yes, 100%. No, one is, no one's winging it. No. 
you know and hands up in here many times i did wing it um so many times i'm like wow this actually worked out really well um i can i i i feel i'm a good listener so i pick up on words but so many times i'm like wow this was trash like <laughs> i really could off uh, i really could off prepare a little bit more okay let yeah. me let me just circle around something that um so we we talked about the power but i really want to circle around one thing and that is really the identity that we are you know setting ourselves for other people to see um especially when it comes to to online space because most of us business owners now we we do get online because you know especially now after the pandemic or it's really really important to be in the online space so you know you have a broader audience and now it's kind of the time how to do it it's to go online so we mold our identities all the time like i say all the time i'm not the same person i was yesterday and i'm not the same person i will be tomorrow i shape my identity all the time because i grow i learn the new things all the time and so as you know so as many other people but i want to know what you think how the words we use because you as we already established you, words are really powerful So I want to see the words we use how then how they can shape the identity that we have and how they can really shape our thinking and 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 the mindset that we have. Yes. Um there's a word that I've started using and that is joyful. Mhm. Mm I I never used that word when it came to my voice coaching up until a couple of months ago. and that has shaped how how i identify what is powerful as far as speaking a vocal speaking presence goes mhm mm because that word for me encapsulates encapsulates a huge amount of generosity and excitement mhm mm and also it reinforces that it's an inside job Being an amazing speaker is an inside job. It's nothing out there. Because there's things you can control and things you can't. Mhm. Mm things we can can't control, everything out there. Everything out there, technology, people, everything. behavior, yeah. everything. What we can control is this. Yeah. What comes out of our mouths? I'm about this. Yep. Everything we up here what comes out of our mouths and how we use our bodies now that we can make really clear powerful choices when it comes mm -hmm. to that stuff i think that words i love words i absolutely love words my degree my my um my bachelor's degree is in english and literature mhm mm so words are are my i've always been my friends mhm mm so i think that the more I think the more excited we can get about telling our stories because you know stories are all about language and it's not about complicated language or ornate language it's not about those things at all it's about how can I because you know having structure around your words I think is really important I was just talking with a client yesterday about structure and storytelling mhm mm and I think words when it comes to telling our stories are you know we choose our words instinctively i think when it comes to because it's a very personal thing when you're telling your story yeah and the words we use the words we use it, they're very it's very telling what language we use to tell those stories and i think it changes all the time yeah it's like what you were saying about yourself we're constantly kind of updating our stories because we are living a day at a time and every day we have experiences that change us as human beings so i think our language changes along with the people we encounter the new things we learn and those all come into i really believe 100% at this point in my career that my personal life what i learn in my personal life comes into practice in my business life and what i learn in my business life comes into practice in my personal relationships too yeah i agree I fully agree with that. Yeah.
and like the people you meet along the way have impact on you as well so the and their language does too language. their language yeah. impacts them too yes yes definitely um and yeah i kind of wanted to say th- there is one thing that you said already and that was that you know watching other people like let's take for instance mel robbins like mel robbins is actually a huge hero of mine i could watch her for just for days basically and simon as well but but mel it's just this powerhouse that it, it's someone that i absolutely admire when it you know when it comes to everything the openness that the words she uses that the way she speaks to her audience it's just, it's just really really powerful and her mindset it's really powerful but this is what i wanted to say and a lot of time and we see this um, in in the online space it's as you already mentioned people feel if they watching somebody else and if they may be using their content or using what they talking about it's stealing or it's you know it's not kosher when it when it comes to their business but i just want to kind of, I, for me i feel it's a myth because you are still putting your own stamp on it and if you really feel powerful about that one thing that the person was talking about why like what's wrong about passing it along to your audience and passing along the message that you feel strong about and the words that shape this message so how what do you think about that like would you say that people are kind of scared doing that and maybe that's also not you know really helping them in in the the process of growing of their identity of who they are the words they want to be using i mean it's not really just stealing but i, I how do you feel about uh, about this well look, look at the example of what we're doing today simon sinek did a really powerful ted talk and we're talking about nerves versus excitement but we're talking about it in our own context yes So these you know, or else a psycho a physiologist or so a sociologist psychologist or a medical person might want to talk about nerves versus excitement as a physical or physiological event mm-hmm. or how it feels. So again I I as a as a writer plagiarism is something that obviously is is a big no no you don't take someone else's words. Reading an article about I don't know the three top vocal techniques that someone thinks are really important. I read that article like wow, oh my god, that is so I totally agree with that. And then I could think well, what are my top three vocal techniques? It inspires me to write an article about three vocal techniques. Yes. Or about the power of breath or whatever it is. So I think it's more being in, instead of appropriating someone else's words, it's about being inspired by that content. Mm. So there are obvious things you that are not appropriate and I think it's important to recognize those things. Yeah, and and I would say as well there is definitely nothing wrong with actually taking the exact words and then giving the credit to the person who said it. Oh. Yeah, I mean it, it's really powerful and um I think so many times people do feel like oh it didn't come from my head I shouldn't be really sharing it but I think it is actually really powerful and the people did said it for some reason they did said it so the word gets out so saying the words exactly that they were said and then giving the credit to the person who said them it's actually super super powerful and it's for sure 100% doesn't bring a bad light onto onto us it's actually i feel makes us more powerful and makes us more you know reliable um because the sources that we are taking we are acknowledging the sources rather than just being like oh i heard this somewhere no i heard this from Simon Sinek and i i'm loving it so yeah, yeah i i kind of do agree with that now one more thing i wanted to circle around today before we finish is obviously i work with mostly with my clients about their productivity and uh, and their mindset and how they can be really productive and when we were actually going uh, to do this live i was talk i was kind of thinking more and more how 
the words we use and the self talk we we talk for ourselves but also the 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 words we use when it comes to our audience it really kind of got me to think how much the right words we use when it comes to self talk can influence the habits we are building when it comes to our life because really realistically people are like oh like even if i take um so many times people say you know i don't set up goals because it just takes me too much time and uh, i just don't have a time for it now we can argue over saying well that's more of a time management issue is it or is it the way we talk to ourselves is it the way we we say oh i i don't have a time because if i say oh i will find a time it's just a different way i'm talking to myself and it's a different way you know prioritizing but the self talk the the power of the words i can put into my head i can put into the situation can absolutely change the situation so how do you feel about you know using the strong words and using the the power of the words in creating you know good mindset and good habits oh yeah good habits that's a huge one this is so because it's so much for some reason it's so much easier to slide down the hill than it is to climb up 100% 100% yeah we've all we've all been there many times during the day you kind of think well it's just so much easier to eat the ben and jerry's than some carrot sticks you know <laughs> you know and it's like that with our habits i think when it comes to to uh practicing or rehearsing or you know get, knuckling down and creating a structure for the story that you're going to tell in your next live or your next post for your instagram or whatever it is and i think a big part of that is you know when you when i when i for instance like i'm creating i'm always thinking okay how can i motivate myself how what words can i say to myself to help enjoy what i'm about to do whether it's whether it's scheduling my social media for the week or whatever whatever it is and i think well what would happen if i enjoyed this instead of thinking it's something i have to do mhm mm and i think well if just today i could use that word well how can i find a bit of joy in doing this because it has to be done and it's it's going to but what instead of thinking okay it has to be done well how much what i wonder how what i could do to to enjoy doing it and then i think well maybe if i do this who knows what who might be listening who knows who might need to hear that today mhm mm so it's kind of flipping it around because you know in nlp neuro, neuro linguistic programming yeah. there's the, the limiting beliefs that we mm -hmm. have and what we the exercise is to look at that limiting belief because it's not a fact it's just a feeling and then to go through well what do we know that disproves this statement i'm going to fail for instance you know and it's words it's actually writing down what proof what facts we know to be true to disprove i'm going to fail and there's big red x through that because we know that that's only a feeling but what is the reality and that's the op usually it's the opposite of whatever that negative limiting belief is i am going to succeed i am a success and it's all words it's using different it's just flipping it and looking at the reality of it and again for some reason it's just so much easier to the negatives just get in there so much more they just slide on in there and they're yeah. like this lubricant it's like it's all so easy to slide in and then think to myself well hang on a second this it it does take a little bit of work at the beginning to change that language and to change and it's not i find it not i don't find it easy same i don't find it easy i think most people again but it's habits you know it's like the same thing with voice work or speech coaching you create you're creating new habits on having a plan Mm -hmm. on how to practice and rehearse having a plan to identify the vocal techniques that resonate with you and to grab those and go okay what two are my go to vocal techniques that I'm going to use all the time yeah it's creating new habits 
and the language thing i think is is definitely part of that yeah definitely and um like i was just going to say when it, when it comes to nlp i i have a degree in nlp and um something i wrote very recently as well was anchoring these feelings so anchoring is really really great technique that can help you to anchor that good feeling can help you to anchor the way you feel in that moment to that situation so when creating a new habit you know well word itself talk as you said how can i that word joyful is actually amazing word how can i create a joy today in this moment how can i be how can this moment can be joyful for me you finding a word like you did and again it for some whatever um whatever i would say rocks your boat so for the listeners who are going to be listening uh, maybe even on the uh, reply but also now on live whatever word creates that that feeling inside you can be your word and can be something that you you can use going forward and anchor this feeling of of joy anchor this feeling of of strength of power which i love using the word power it's one of my favorite words uh because it just creates this fire inside me i feel like i'm strong and powerful i can make change and i know it's a really bold word and i know uh like big word not many people like using that word but it creates that that energy inside me that you know a uh, uh, joyful creates w- inside you so anchoring this feeling or anchoring the the word into that feeling can really then help us to as you said just repeat the same process you already did it once find the way to do it again and again and again and i really liked how you said um yeah when it comes to nlp what's your proof what what's the proof in here how can you prove that this will happen or how can you prove that this is actually happening like do you have any proof on the other hand is there a proof that somebody else did it or is there a proof in your life that you already did something like this and if you did some, do something like this in your life previously well you did it once you can do it twice if you did it once already before in maybe a little bit different uh, situation but you already did it what did you do at that moment so you can create what words did you use how did you felt i really do think then we can you know do it again and again and again when it comes to the self talk and when it comes to creating these uh, these great habits and the performance we want to um get out of of using correct words i'm just looking at some of these comments down here um oh yeah it's great you know i think a lot of these people can really re- a lot of people these people can re- are saying you know they're really relating to this yeah. especially the whole nerves thing as well yeah it's it's huge 100% and um i really really appreciate um that you had time to talk about this today because i don't as you already said yourself not many people do talk about this and not many people do get it out there you know it's uh, it seems like it is this normal thing yes it's normal thing but there are ways how to overcome it there are techniques do do it? yeah how how to actually get better at it and i um uh, I I love always saying anything we do in life and I I stand by this anything we do in the life it's like learning how to ride a bicycle nobody it's you know I I see people I'm I'm not creative are you using mm. your creativity side are you, are you deliberately going in there every single day poking the creativity side of you no mm. well then you know you're not creative you're not a public speaker are you going every day standing in front of the mirror you know practicing 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 one last thing and that really comes to this uh this practice 
And it's huge now. It's huge. It's perfectionism. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I, I hands up now. I'm actually doing a challenge for myself that I have three goals and no more. So if the third time around it's still crappy, I'm still posting it because that's it. I have three times rule now because I used to do it 50 times. And then, you know, that's just not uh, uh, the time management was then going off the roof. But um how do you feel about, you know, people could say practice and perfectionism, then it's the same thing. I yeah, would I say no, but what no. do you think? No, I, I, you know, that practice makes perfect kind of thing. It, that axiom, it's, it's, I think it's bullshit because it's practice makes perfect progress makes practice makes progress. It's progress, not perfection. Mm -hmm. And I think perfectionism is just, it's the, it's the extreme of, of wanting, of change. Like change is one thing, but when we want it, it's, and for perfectionism, I think also for me, it's, it, it's an underlying, there's an underlying pool of fear underneath perfectionism. Mm -hmm. And in fairness, like my perfectionism has driven me to achieve a lot of stuff. And do, you know, as a performer and an actor and all of those things, don't get me wrong, I've done lots of tours and stuff, but it's when it goes, perfectionism for me, I, I can take it to the extreme, like a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's reminding, I think it's great you talked about having your three, three goals. Perfectionism for me also has gotten me into a lot of trouble, Thanks. a lot of trouble. And I think more for me, instead of that, it's kind of like, okay, what's my plan today? It's having a plan. What's the plan today? I can do today. And also per with perfectionism, I hold on, I try to hold on to the outcomes of my endeavors. Mm -hmm. And that never works. And I think perfectionism also for me, like a lot of people, is about control. And yeah. that is the biggest lie. So the biggest con about perfectionism is that somehow you can control the outcomes of what you're doing. Yeah. And you can't. Biggest con in the world. No, yeah. you can't. Yeah. No. And, and, you know, these days we, we talk a lot about no makeup, body positivity, you know? So <laughs> why are we still leaping on, oh, my gosh, I made a mistake there. I have to start over again. Yeah. You don't. Just... You are human. Just go and post it with the mistake. I mean, um, this this new thing I'm doing, you know, three times and no more. It's really, yeah, really yeah. helping me to just embrace that I, I said something wrong or I, I, I blubbed or, I, you know, and it's natural. And I think what people want to hear and see, it's it's being authentic rather yeah. than super, super polished. You know, I saw TED Talks where people are like, oh, blah, 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 what I was going to say there. And uh, it can happen. Uh, I mean, it, I'm sure that as a performer, you know, like how many times happened that you maybe forgot your lines. I, I remember when I was going, um, I was singing on weddings and stuff. I would forget the words of the song. It's the moment of what you're going to do. It's the moment, it's the confidence in being like, I'm just going to make up words in here or I'm just going to improvise because I know I can do it. I feel really strong about, about this moment. I know I can do it. I'm very confident and you just wing it there and then, you know. Um, so I, I do feel that unpolished, it's better than really, really polished. Next. One thing I will add to that, though, is that have a plan because failing to plan is planning to fail. Yes. Have a plan of action. Um, and people are attracted to the live experience. They're witnessing something that's not going to happen again. So if you do make a little mistake, if you're, you know, if you're filming your little Facebook or your Insta or your LinkedIn post, whatever it is, it's that live feeling that people buzz on. 
That's why we love going to live events because we're witnessing something that is happening. It's not going to happen again. And we were there. Yeah. So that's why lives are so exciting for people. So anyone who is feeling absolute terror about doing a Facebook live, an Insta live, just remember that people come to those things because they want a live experience. They want to feel you and see you and hear you. And if tech goes down, tech goes down. If they stop working, they don't work. If you can't figure out where the bloody blab button is, someone will probably message you and go, it's in the right hand corner. And you'll laugh about it and you'll think, ha, oh my God, that's ridiculous. That's hilarious. Live is in, in this virtual online world that we have had to embrace. We, I think sometimes, you know, there are more webinars. If I see one more webinar, I think I'm going to just slip my throat because <laughs> I cannot go to one more webinar because it's just, I find them so boring, so tediously boring. I, I, I don't want to listen to someone with this pre recorded message. I mean, it's just, so I don't know. Personal. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, it was fine at the beginning of COVID. But after about 10 or 15 of them, because I, I just wanted to see what people were doing. Listen, people, we want to we want to feel you like we want to have a plan. Don't go in there going, I don't know what I'm going to talk about. Sure, I'll just, you know, get my cup of coffee and just wing it, you know. Well, come on. This is your time and somebody else's time. And that's valuable. So value other people's time, yeah. time as well. 100% agree. 100% agree. And, uh, yeah, I, I agree with the webinars as well. Um, I definitely <laughs> feel the live energy. Like for me, for instance, I buzz on from other people's energy. So I want – I'll – get I'll give when I get so if I get the energy from people if I see like today people are you know writing in the comments and they're waving and they, and they can relate I, to what we are talking sorry, about someone's just, someone's just written here webinar burnout syndrome girlfriend or boyfriend whoever you are sister I hear you mm, mm, oh, mm, mm. <laughs> yeah <Ugh. laughs> yeah so sorry I interrupted so you this, there, really, this really is you know making me like yes this this is live this is what is happening i mean um the setup i have in here today we just uh i just spoke with maria i'm i'm not even at home i don't even yeah. have my normal stuff you know but that's okay it's okay it doesn't always have to be perfect it just needs to be honest yeah 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 Exactly. Brilliant. Well, look, I am so grateful we did this and I'm so grateful you were able to talk to me today about, you know, the, the, the power of words and how can words really significantly change the, the way we, we present ourselves, we speak, we talk, we, we think. You know, it's words are just the power. And I'm really sure I will have you here again um, to talk about more incredible things that you do and how words are really, really, um, you know, it, it, for me, what, you know, what we think, it's super powerful. But what, how we express this, it's like the next really powerful thing you know it's uh and you touched on this before so many times we we do have amazing ideas we do have amazing things in our head we just don't know how to get it out and 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 choosing right words when it comes to your confidence when it comes to your identity when it comes to creating these um really strong habits in your life productivity words can help you in all of these the way you talk to others but the way you talk to yourself can really really help you to create and shift the the identity the mindset that you do want to have and what you want to express when it comes to 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 other people to your business to to whatever you are doing yeah absolutely yeah maria oh listen all right darling it was so lovely to speak to you this morning thanks everybody who tuned in thanks for your comments as well it's great to see those scrolling up from the bottom thank you so much to everyone and yes we definitely see each other again i uh, wish you happy friday again and have a great weekend bye everyone, bye, everyone. bye bye <laughs>